Okay, let's start. Hello, everyone. My name is Jialin Chao. Today, I will introduce the use cases and optimizations of IoT DB. I will give this talk in five parts. First, let me introduce myself. I'm a PhD student in Tsinghua University, and I take part in IoT DB project since 2016 and became an initial committer and PMC of Apache LTDB. In the community, I participate in the function designing, review PRs, and when users report some problem, I will locate and fix bugs. Besides, currently, I investigate the improvement of the core engine of LTDB. Before the main content, I will give a brief introduction about LTDB. LTDB is an IoT native database with high performance for data management and analysis on the edge and the cloud. LTDB was born in 2015 in Tsinghua University and entered the Apache incubator in 2018. Recently, a big event of LTDB is the graduation and we become a top level project. With our mentors help and the effort of contributors we released nine versions and attracted 78 contributors. And uh, we integrate well with other Apache projects such as PLC4X, Flink, Hadoop, and Spark. LTDB is for IoT data management, where IoT data is mainly the time series data. The life cycle of IoT data mainly contains five parts data collection, pre-processing, storage, data analysis, and applications. First, data generated from edge devices could be collected through PLC4X. Then it usually be sent to a message queue or streaming processing framework, such as Parser, Kafka, and Flink. After the pre-processing, the data flows into the storage layer where LTDB locates. LTDB could support efficient data storage and real-time query in low latency. Usually in such a system architecture, the time series data is stored in a time series database for real-time query. At the same time, data is usually stored in another data warehouse for batch processing and analysis. In the analysis layer, by integrating with Spark and Hive, users could analyze the data stored in LTDB directly. In this way, LTDB could be seen as a database and also a data warehouse. You do not need to store data twice in two systems, which reducing the system complexity. The architecture of LTDB is as follows. First, time series data is generated from edge devices or other data sources. To support a lightweight time series data management in the edge, we first design a columnar file format called a TS file. TS file is to manage time series data and could be used independently at edge, just like Pakai or ORC files. Based on the TS file, we build the LTDB engine for flexible data management and the rich query of time series. Users could access the LTDB engine through two APIs, the JDBC and the Session APIs. On top of the LTDB engine, command line interface, Grafana adapter, and some system tools are developed. Suppose we store the data of each device in each LTDB instance and we want to collect the data of all of them into one LTDB in the cloud. Then we could use the sync tool to transfer the data files. Uh, finally, both the TS file and the LTDB could be accessed by Spark. 
LTDB adopts a tree structured schema management. The path from root to temperature is an example of time series. Each node in this path is separated by the dot in this schema tree. All time series start from root. Storage group is a concept that is a group of time series, which lacks the database in the relational databases. In each storage group, all its time series will start in the same data files. The last level but one is the device, and the last level is the time series level. The devices is inferred automatically when you create a time series. Although this tree has five layers, actually each time series could have different layers, which is adaptive for the complex IoT scenario. The storage engine of IoTDB is the TLSM engine, which is similar to the LSM tree. We leverage the concept of time to accelerate the insertion and query. First, we store the out-of-order data and ordered data separately to accelerate the queries. In the time series database, time, the partition is an important task. Uh, in LTDB, we partition and index the data by the time interval. We also use time as the main index in the TLSM engine. Data is appended into an out-of-order or an ordered MEM table according to its timestamp. When the MEM table reaches a threshold, it is flashed to the disk. There are three compaction procedures in LTDB. The first is compacting the most recent data into larger blocks to accelerate recent data queries. We call the hot compaction. And the second compaction is to eliminate the out of order data. The third compaction is enlarging the historical data blocks. The following is some typical applications that are using LTDB. In Shanghai, China, the subway monitoring application uses LTDB to store the sensor data. The character of this application is its high read uh, throughput. There are 1 million time series, which come from 300 subway trains, and each train has 3,200 sensors. The data collection frequency is 5 hertz. Each record contains all sensors of one device. Therefore, total 400 billion points are generated per day, which occupies one terabyte on disk per month. The next application is the power plant monitoring. This is another interesting use case. In this application, each power plant deploys an LTDB instance. The whole power plant is seen as a device. And this device contains 300,000 time series. If we treat each device as a table, in the relational database, then the, this table has 300,000 columns, which is really a wide table. The data is collected uh, every five uh, seconds. There are many query types. The first query type with the latest point of the given time series. The second query type is getting the raw data of a series in the last day. And the third query samples data of one series every five minutes during a day. A tobacco company in China is building the intelligent cigarette factory. The whole system architecture has three layers. The top level is the cloud platform of the company, which summarizes the data of all its factories. Uh, the factory is a middle layer. Each factory has multiple shops. For example, the silk making shop, the wrap around shop, and the material flow shop. Each factory and shop deploys an LTDB instance 
and the data is generated from the shop. So the question is how to synchronize data between different layers. Actually, the solution depends on the business requirements. In this case, both the shop layer and the factory layer want to have real-time data, which is to say that the ingestion latency should be within a second. So double write is needed. That is, once the data is collected, it is written to the LTDB instance in the shop and the factory layer at the same time. The LTDB instance in the company level is used for big data analysis. The query is mainly oriented to the historical data, so the latency could be hours. Therefore, the sync tool of LTDB could be used. Once a data file is closed in the factory, it could be transferred to the LTDB in the company level. Currently, data files are generated every four hours. Then I will introduce many interesting requirements and optimizations we did in these cases. The optimizations include the schema management, query types and performance, write throughput, and the memory control. When using LTDB in an application, the first important thing is to set a proper storage groups. Usually, the number of storage group is about 10 to 15, 50, which is the number of CPU cores to get high parallelism because each storage group is an independent storage engine that has one thread to serve reads. There are usually two ways to choose the storage group. One is to choose a proper attributes of your time series that is that has a suitable cardinality. For example, suppose we have 30 factories, then we could set the factory as the storage group level. The other way is to manually partition your time series. Suppose you have 100 devices and you could partition them into 10 storage groups by a hash function. The number of device should be designed properly because a large number of devices will bring large memory overhead to LTDB currently. The device number of one LTDB instance should, be, should not exist 100,000 or so. Therefore, please ensure that you know how many devices are in your system because device is auto set when you create a time series. If you do not have if you do not name the series properly, the real number of devices may much larger than you thought. For example, when you create a time series from root.sg.device.environment, then the device will be set as root from to device. If you append a meaningless suffix behind the time series, for example, a suffix that named the value, then the environment will be set as a device. In most uh, databases, especially the relational databases, the schema should be set before the data is ingested. But in many IoT cases, the schema is defined inside the devices, and we do not know the precise schema, such as the data type of each time series, until the data is collected. To solve this problem, we introduce we introduce the register schema automatically when do when do insertion and the infer schema from the inserted values. Then we got one more question: What schema is expected from users? We first classify the values by its formatting, such as the boolean stream, integer stream, flow stream, and the text stream. Then we allow users to configure how to infer data types of each format. For example, we could treat the Boolean stream as Boolean or text and treat the integer stream as integer or float or double data type in LTDB. In the previous version, when we read one time series in TSVL, we need to read the metadata of all time series of our device. Recall that in the power plant monitoring application, 
Each device contains 300,000 time series. This will bring much challenge to the query performance. To solve this problem, we built a tree structure of metadata to manage the mass time series metadata in each file. Also in the power plant monitoring application, users want to get the latest point of 50,000 time series. Here, the latest point contains a timestamp and a value. To support this scenario efficiently, we define a special query called the last query for this scenario. The result has three columns. The first is time, the second is time series pass and the value. To answer this query quickly, we catch the latest value of each series when insertion. So we could return the last point of all series without within one second. This is because we don't need to read the disk. Daily report is an important requirement in the manufacture. To support this, the group group by in time interval query is often used. Users first choose a query time range, then split the whole range by an interval. For example, split the time range from one to 10 by an interval two to get five intervals. Then users apply aggregation function average on each interval to get the final results. However, there is one scenario that the above semantic could not support. For example, users want to get the average temperature from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. of each day in the last month. The above cycle could not support this because all intervals are contiguous. To support this, we extend the group by time interval to the group by sliding window with three parameters. The first is the whole query range. The second is the aggregation interval. The third is the sliding step. By this way, each aggregation interval do not need to be adjacent. In the process flow diagram, each monitoring point is collected independently. Even they are intended to collect by a fixed frequency. The real timestamp usually waves slightly and the values of different series cannot align by time perfectly. <clears throat> this causes trouble to data analysis. To solve this problem, users usually use the downsampling query. The query process is sample a point at a fixed interval. If, they, if there doesn't exist a point at the sampled timestamp, then use the previous value to fill it. By downsampling for multiple series, the values could be aligned by time perfectly. So how we support this function in LTDB? The downsampling could be implemented by the group by time interval in LTDB. After splitting the query time range into multiple interval, we could apply an aggregation function called last value on each interval. By this way, we support the downsampling easily. However, in some cases, there is no data point at the whole interval. Then we get a null value at this interval, which causes trouble for the data analysis or the data visualization. To fill this null value, we introduce the fill clause, which uses the result of the nearby interval to fill this interval. Currently, we support the previous field for the downsampling. The query throughput is affected by the memory allocated for each series. Suppose the size of the memory buffer, we call the memory table, is one gigabyte, and we need to manage 10,000 time series. Then each series will only have 600 points. If we read the raw data of the series with one hertz during a day, then we need to read 100 data blocks 
which may be time consuming. As we can see, the data blocks mainly depends on the size of the MEM table. Currently, LTDB has a dynamic parameter adapter model. This model will dynamically adjust the system parameters, such as the size of the MEM table and the data file for memory control when the load is changed. This is to avoid the out of memory. However, this model works very cautious, which leads to small data blocks. To increase the query throughput, we could manually configure LTDB to get larger data blocks. First, the total memory of LTDB could be set by the max heap size in LTDB NV shell. Then you could disable the parameter adapter and set the mem table size and the TS file size according to the following equation. To liberate uh, productivity, we are improving our memory control strategy. In the next big version, you will no longer need to worry about this. To further increase query throughput, we introduced the level compaction. Compaction is a necessary model in the LSM based system. This feature will also be included in next version. Out of order data is a common case in IoT scenario. We say the time series of inserted data is not in chronological order, it's out of order data. According to our statistics in a wind turbine plant in 2018, there are one half of out of order data and the most out of order data is in the recent time interval. Out of order data is not favorited by database because it will impact the system performance in many cases. First, in the raw data query, if two data blocks are overlapped, we need to merge the two blocks by a merge sort. For the aggregation query, we, generate, we will generate the synopsis for each data block. For example, the mean value, the max value, the first timestamp and the last timestamp. Then we do not need to read the raw data when do aggregations. But the out of order data will destroy the synopsis information. And we need to read the raw data to answer the aggregation query. To get rid of out of order data, we could do some effort, both in the client side and in the server side. First, in the server side, LTDB tolerates limited out of order data in the memory buffer, which lacks a sliding window. In the server, we distinguish out the out of order data in the device level. For example, if the max flash time of a device is T, the newly inserted data of this device, whose time less than or equal to T is out of order data. And the data that larger than T could be seen as ordered data. Further, the compaction could be done to eliminate out of order data. You could enable the, mer the compaction function by set the merge interval second to a non-zero value, which means a merge thread will be started every merge interval. In the client side, users could try to write the data of each device in the sending order. The left insertions doesn't contain out of order data because the timestamp of each record is increasing from one to three. The right two figures may have out of order data because the time is in descending order or at the same time of different series in a device. Why this scenario will generate the out of order data? For example, when you insert a point whose timestamp is one, the memory is full and the data is flashed to disk. Then another point of this series with the same timestamp, timestamp one should be treated as out of order data 
because we do not modify the disk data. We just uh, append the data blocks. To increase the write throughput, we could use multiple data directories. Then each disk could share some I.O. overhead. We use the write ahead log to ensure the data safety. But uh, this will impact the write performance. So it's better to store the write ahead log on a separate disk. If you have a SSD, then use SSD for the write ahead log is better. To support low latency in the insertion, when writing data points, we just append them directly to the tail of the main table. The insertion time complexity is O1. And when query data, we copy the data in memory and then do a sort. The query time complexity for memory data is O n log n. Last, we optimize the write performance in the write interface. For Java developers, LTDB provides two interfaces, the GDBC and the native interface session, which is a NoSQL interface. The session is more efficient than GDBC because it avoids the SQL parsing process. There are two main data structures in the session. One is record and the other is tablet. The main difference between these two structures is if we take the data as a table, if there exists no values, then they are records. Otherwise, it is a tablet. In most cases, write data by tablet is more efficient than write data by records. The memory control is important for our database. In LTDB, each story group has an independent engine, which contains one working MEM table to receive the threads. When the total size of MEM table reaches a threshold, we will flash the biggest one. Then it becomes a flashing MEM table that is read only. To store the data in MEM table more efficiently and save memory, we use an array of primitive data type to store the data and use a pool to catch the arrays to reduce the GC in the GVM. The last part is the frequently asked questions. You could treat this as a lookup table. Most of these problems will be solved in the future, future version. And you can contact us through our mail list. Before sending emails, you need to subscribe the email. Another way to get feedback is to create issues in the our GitHub or in the Jira. Looking forward to see you in your in our mail list. Okay, thanks for listening.